نستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرساله التلمانه نصح الامه كشف الغمه وجاهد في الله حق جهاده وتركنا على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سار على نهجهم واقتدى بسنتهم وهديهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are still continuing our series of khutbah entitled Immigration and Integration الهجرة والاندماج And we are trying to cover in this series the most important strategic work of our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and his companions over the course of 10 years in the Medina The work in building the Muslim community identity, the work in integrating in da'wah and reform in all aspects of life. And also we will see how the Prophet Sallallahu interacted with all the different groups of the Medina society, Muslims and non-Muslims, while he balanced the preservation of Islamic identity, al-hifad ala al-hawiyya al-islamiyya, and citizenship, wal muwatana My dear respected brothers and sisters, we are still covering the 10th and the final strategic project from that series that the Prophet وسلم, he carried out in the Medina, which is the family reform, al-islah al usay In the last khutbah of that series, if you recall, we covered eight crucial concepts that uh, about raising children in Islam. And we consider these concepts as an essential foundation, essential foundation of parenting in Islam. And today, inshallah ta'ala, as I promised you, we will cover some of the methods of raising children in Islam using the methodology and the approach of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Exploring in the seerah how he did that. And subhanAllah, when I search deeply in this subject, I found this subject is enormous. And maybe it needs a multiple khutbah or maybe a series like this series just talking about 
raising children in Islam to cover it properly. But in this khutbah, inshallah, I will just give you a glimpse. We will try just to discover the tips of the iceberg. And to simplify the subject, I managed to divide the methods of Prophet Muhammad in the way he raised the children. I divided it to three different categories. The first one I call it al asarib al-Tarbawiyah, the educational or uh, they call it uh, maybe pedagogic, pedagogical, uh, pedago pedagogical uh, or the educational methods, al asarib al-Tarbawiyah. The second one, intellectual methods, al asarib al-Fikriyah. And the third one, which is a surprising one, is the psychological methods, al asarib al-Nafsiyah. And I will briefly, inshallah, cover with you today just the educational methods only, due to the time limit. And for the other two sectors, I will mention at the end of this khutbah just some titles regarding each aspect for the different methods that the Prophet ﷺ he used in these two areas, the intellectual and the psychological method, just to show you the area that we need to discover as Muslims. So let's start, inshallah, with the primary sector, which is the educational methods, al asarib al-Tarbawiyah, that the Prophet Sallallahu he used, or even directed the parents to use it with their kids. And inshallah, I will mention just the top five methods. There are many methods, but I will just mention to you uh, the top five methods. The first one is leading by a good example. This is one of the yani, best methods of raising your children, leading by a good example, even though that we mention that in the concepts, and we consider it one, uh, I consider it actually one of the most effective methods of raising children. Even its effect, the belief of your kids. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, كل يولد على الفطرة The meaning of the hadith that every person will be born on a fitrah, which is Islam. But because leading by example of his parents, he will become a Yahudi, a Jew, Jewish or uh, a Majusi or a Christian. So that shows you the power of leading by example and its effect on the kids. It affects even their religion. Prophet, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, also he mentioned, he was the first one who defined parenting as a leadership. And I mentioned that in a previous hadith when the Prophet وسلم, he said, Kullukum ra'im wa kullukum mas'ulun an rayatih. He did that all of you are shepherd, which means يعني, a leader or a guardian. And all of you are responsible for your flocks. But he didn't mention only the top leadership, which is the leadership of the, uh, the ultimate leadership for, for the society. He said part of it is the leadership of the husband in his, in his home and the wife in her home. They are considered leaders. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he guided the parents to be a good role models in, for their kids in all areas, all areas, especially especially in the morals, akhlaq, worship, and dealings. And let me give you some examples from the hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how to be, yani, uh, to be a leader, a good yani, role model for your kids in morals, for example. And I will just tackle one area, which is telling the truth. As narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu wa when he said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, مَنْ قَالَ لِصَبِيٍ تَعَالَ هَاكْ ثُمَّ لَمْ يُعْطِهِ فَهِيَ كَذِبًا the meaning of the hadith that whoever called his child to give him something and he didn't, it is a lie. It is a lie. Abdullah ibn Amr, he said, one day my mother called me while the Prophet Muhammad was sitting in our house. He was young at that time. So he said, she said to him, his mother, come, I want to give you something. Come, I want to give you something. So immediately the Prophet he asked her, what do you want to give him? She said, I wanted to give him dates. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, That if you did not give him something, it would be written on you as a lie. So this is how to lead your kids, by example, in the morals. Regarding the worship, how to lead, by example, good example, regarding the worship. A famous hadith, and I think most of you know this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, that Ibn Abbas, عنه, he said, 
I slept at my aunt Maimuna house. And when it was late at night, Abdullah ibn Abbas was really young at that age, at that time. So he said at late night, the Prophet ﷺ, he woke up without anybody's feeling, but he felt Abdullah ibn Mas'ud or Abdullah ibn, uh, ibn Abbas. He said, I saw the Prophet ﷺ woke up and he made a light wudu, light wudu from a water container that was hanged on the wall and started to pray. So what Abdullah ibn Abbas said, so I did the wudu the way that he did. I did the wudu the way that he did. Then I prayed beside him on his left. So the Prophet ﷺ, while he was praying, he moved him from the left side to the right side. Till the end of the hadith. So look at the child and how he imitate the Prophet ﷺ in his wudu and his prayer. My question to you, my dear respected brothers and sisters, how often how often have our kids awakened and seen us praying at night? Or how often we did a sadaqah or anything? Seeing the parents doing that is much better than many lectures that you do about Qiyam al They want to see it in your action, not in the books. Not in the book of the seerah. They want to see the parents activating that, these attitudes at their home. The same thing with the sadaqah, the same thing with fasting. They want to see you, not just read it from the books. That's how to lead by example in the worship. Another hadith that narrated by Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr, he said he was watching the dua of his father, the dua of his father day and night. And one day he asked his father, Oh father, I saw you frequently saying day and night, three times, every morning and every night. Allahumma afini fi sam'i, Allahumma afini fi basari, la ilaha illa ant. So his father responded, I heard the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is making that dua, and I would like to follow his sunnah. So it's important that your kid, to see you de doing this dua, when you enter your home, and to do it loudly, say it loudly, to do adkar al-sabah, adkar al masa loudly at your home, when you ride the car, when you exit from your home, when you eat. He wants to see these practices and these adaya in your life, not just in, in, in Sahih Muslim, in the books. And this is how to lead your kids by example in the worship. So the parents are required to lead by a good example for their children as they watch them day and night and capture consciously and unconsciously and unconsciously all their actions. And they are, believe me, your kids, even they are young and small, one year or two years, they are intelligent, small, and active recorders. They will record everything, whether you like it or not. So lead by a good example at your home. And that's a form of leadership. The second thing, the second style that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he uh, encouraged us to use, is selecting the proper time for educating. So to get the ultimate fruits of your advice to your children, you need to select the right time and also the right place. Right time and right place. When they are in the right mood to accept it. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he accurately detected and selected the best time and place to advise the kids. And subhanAllah, when I looked at the seerah, I found three primary times that the Prophet وسلم, he used them to advise the kids. The first one, on the road, on the road, while riding and going to a picnic, as narrated by Ibn Abbas, the famous hadith that he said that I was riding behind the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, Ya ghulam, inni u'allimuka kalimat. Ihfadillaha yahfadhk, ihfadillaha tajidu tujahak, ida s'alta fas'alillah, wa ida s'ta'anta fas'ta'in billah. Wa'alam anna al-ummata lo ujtama'at ala iyanfa'uka bi shay, la iyanfa'uka illa bi shayin qad katabahu Allahu lak. وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ يَضُرُّكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَنْ يَضُرُّكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ رُفِعَةِ الْأَقْلَامُ وَجَبْتَةِ الصُّحُفِ The meaning, which is a famous hadith, the meaning of the hadith, that the Prophet ﷺ started the hadith, O oh, Ghulam, I want, I'm teaching you words, till the end of the hadith. And the hadith itself, it was يعني, containing a very deep meanings, very deep meanings, that he was telling Abd Ibn Abbas while he was riding behind him, not in closed room not in closed rooms. So, 
The second area, I found him during eating. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are multiple hadith. One of them is Umar ibn Abi Salama, radiallahu anhu arda. He said that I was eating in the lap of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he was too young. He was sitting in the lap of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his hand was, يعني, uh, uh, he said that my hand was يعني, going all over the plate. وَكَانَتْ يَدِي تَطِيشُ بِالصُّحْبَةِ So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, يَا غُلَامْ سَمِّ اللَّهِ وَكُلْ بِيَمِينِكَ وَكُلْ مِمَّا يَلِيكَ The meaning of that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, O غُلَامْ, O young boy, say, Bismillah, eat in your right hand, and eat from the front of you. And subhanAllah, uh, Umar ibn Abi Salama, he said, it became my way in eating. And subhanAllah, there are many studies on the family eating together. Right, right now, nowadays, you will find most of the people, they will eat يعني, separately. The kids, they will eat in their rooms. The father, he will eat, they eat late. The mother, eat, eat separately. And that's wrong. They did one of the studies of the most influential people and the leaders. They found one of, a lot of characteristics among them that one of the major characteristics that their families, they used to sit together. And it's very important. It has a huge influential on, on, the, on the kids' uh, stability, on their mental health, on communication, on education. They need to sit together. And this is one of the best يعني, places to educate and to communicate with your kids. During sickness, the third one, during sickness. During sickness, even يعني, the tough hearts, it will, it will become soft and will become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the forgiveness. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he utilized that in doing the advice to the kids. As narrated by Anas ibn Malik, when he said that a Jewish boy served the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and one day he became sick, so the Prophet, he visited him. And Anas was, was with, with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said that the Prophet, he sat close to his head, and he said to him, accept Islam. So the boy looked at his father, and his father had told him, obey Abu al-Qasim. So the boy looked, so the boy accepted Islam, and the Prophet sallallahu he went from that visit saying, thank to Allah who saved him from the hellfire. And for sure, for there are other proper times and places in, for educating your kids, and it's different from one, one kid to another. So it's important you as a parent to discover these areas, the proper time, and the proper place that is effective with your kids. Detect them and use them effectively. The third one, the third style that the Prophet ﷺ, he used and also he advised the parents to do it is to be justice, justice and equality among children. Justice and equality among children. Injustice and inequality would could generate animosity, hate and envy among the children, brothers and sisters. And subhanAllah, look at Surah Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf, brother, who is a prophet, and his father is a prophet too. So Yusuf alayhi salam, and so the amount of love, the, the, the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, they saw the amount of love that their father, Yaqub, he showed it to Yusuf, which was much more significant than the love they showed, showed them. And they immediately, they accused their father of being mistaken. Inna abana lafi mubin, due to that act of injustice in the way that you show the love. And they committed their shameful crime toward their young brother who did nothing to them. And Nu'mad ibn Bashir narrated that his father, once he took him to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to make the Prophet as a witness on something that he's gonna give it to him. So Nu'mad ibn Bashir, he said that my father, he came to the Prophet when I was young and said, I gave my son a servant that I used to have. So immediately the Prophet Sallallahu asked him, did you give the same to all your children? He said, no. So the Prophet Sallallahu he said, don't witness me on injustice. Don't witness me in, on injustice. Then he said to him in another narration, do you like your children to be equal to you in, in, in their birr and their yani, goodness? You have to be equal to them in their giving, in your giving. And he told them again, then I won't witness. He said, yes, I want them to be the same in the bir. So he told them, then I won't witness. So he said that my father, he returned back the, the, the gift that he gave it to me. 
And the justice in Islam, subhanAllah, goes even further than that. If you look closely in the hadith, it goes even in different hadith further than that. Even in the number of kisses that you give it to your, to your kids. And subhanAllah, try it with your kids. If you, one of your kids give, it, give him three kisses and the other one give him one, he will tell you, why you give my father, uh, brother three kisses? They count and they watch these things, even if they are young. They watch these things. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu as narrated on Anas, he said, a man was sitting with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and they were talking. So it happened that his son came. So the man, he kissed his son, he kissed his thumb, and he put him in his lap. And after a few minutes, his daughter came. So he took her and he put, him, put her beside him. So immediately the Prophet interrupted the talk and he did, told him, you didn't, you didn't practice justice between them. Because he put his daughter, no kiss, no lap, like his brother, like her brother. So immediately the Prophet ﷺ told him, you did not practice justice between them. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, on the, other hand, on the other hand, he told us about the reward of justice parents in the hadith that narrated in Sahih Muslim on Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As when he said that, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, إن المقصطين عند الله على منابر من نور إن المقصطين عند الله على منابر من نور الذين يعدلون في حكمهم وأهليهم وما ولوا The meaning of the hadith that the justice people Allah will reward them with a platform of light Those who are just in their judgment with their families and whomever they rule whomever they rule Subhanallah most of the justice uh, hadith and the, the, the fadl and the reward for the justice people, all the time we take it just for the ultimate leadership. And we forgot about the other type of leadership that the Prophet ﷺ told in the hadith, which is the parents in his family, the, 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 the parents in their families, whether the father or the, 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 the mother in between among their kids. So that's a major form of justice. The fourth method is responding and fulfilling the children's rights. Giving the children their rights and accepting the truth from them will give them a positive feeling about life. As narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari wa Muslim, Sahl ibn Sa'd, he said that a drink was given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu In some of the narration, this drink is, is a yogurt, laban. And you know that the Prophet sallallahu he drank from it, so, and you know that when he drank the Prophet from, the, from, from, from that pot, the Sahaba, they used to fight. Who will take that pot? And even they drink behind the Prophet and even they put their mouth in the area that the Prophet drank from it because this is a blessing. But it happened at that time that they were sitting yani in an order way. So when they give him the pot by the Sunnah, he has to give it to the person on the right. And Taban, subhanAllah, on his right was a young boy, and on his left, elder adults and leaders of the community. So the Prophet ﷺ, he know that this is the right of the, of the kids. <laughs> so he gave him the pot. So, so the Prophet ﷺ, no, he didn't give him the pot. Basically, he asked him, he said to the boy, the Prophet ﷺ asked the boy, would you excuse me for giving those people before you would you excuse me to give those people before you? So what was the boy's response? No. Just imagine if you have, if th that was your boy, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Maybe you, you would tell him that you are not polite or you, you, you will punish him uh, or you, 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 you adjust his attitude. And then he said, the boy, he said, by Allah, O messenger of Allah, I will not sacrifice my share of drinking after you for anyone. So what the Prophet ﷺ, he did? He immediately, the Prophet put the drink in the boy's hand. And subhanAllah, the Prophet gives him that right to select. And also, most importantly, to enjoy his right without any hard feeling. Without any hard feeling or, or blame. Because sometimes when we give the choices for our kids, sometimes, and we, we are trying to practice to be a democratic, but sometimes we are seeking a specific answer. And if we didn't get that answer, maybe we'll punish him at, at, at home. Or we'll try to abuse his right. And subhanAllah, the Prophet when he gave it to him, 
without any frowning, without any comments, without any anything. And he gave it to him with happiness. So we need to practice that justice among our kids. The fifth and the final one, stay away from too much blaming and punishment. If you read the biography of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he stayed away from blaming and punishment regarding raising the children. And a famous hadith narrated by Anas, Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived to the Medina, immediately his mother, Umm Salama, she brought Anas, he was so young, too, too young, and he, she, put it to, uh, he, she gave it to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he, she told him that Anas over here to serve you, O Prophet. So he lived with the Prophet for 10 years till the death of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So after the death of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and after multiple years, the Tabi'een, they were asking Anas ibn Malik about the behavior of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you lived 10 years at the house of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and contacting directly with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So how was his raising? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the, Anas ibn Malik, he said, I served the Prophet for 10 years. He never told me for something that I did why you did it, or for something that I didn't do why you didn't do. And Anas, and Anas said in another narration that he did not blame me for any delay in fulfilling his order. And if somebody from his home blamed me for that, from yani, the, the, the wives of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would say to them, listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would say to them. He would say, leave him alone. I know if he can fulfill the order, he will do it. And subhanallah, look at the mercy, the trust, the responsibility, the amount of love that he implants the Prophet Sallallahu in that action, in Anas ibn Malik. And subhanallah, if I ask anyone, anyone, anyone of you to do that, to deal with his kids without blaming even, which is the lowest yani, level of punishment, blaming, a lot of you, they will say, how am I gonna raise my kids? as if there is no way to raise our kids except by blaming and punishment. And there is a huge area, part of it is leading by example, and different areas of raising our kids. But we need to explore it in the seerah and the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad The Prophet sallallahu seerah is rich of unique and innovative methods for raising our children in Islam. And still, we have the intellectual methods sector that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used in raising the children, such as the storytelling, direct speech, using the logic that the children, did, that they can understand. And most importantly, the quiet dialogue. This is part of his sunnah. One part of his methods is the quiet dialogue, the practical and experimental methods, and linking the child to the fixed role model, such as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, we didn't touch the third sector, which is the psychological methods, where the Prophet ﷺ, he used it in raising the children, such as children accompanies, like taking your child to uh, the meetings with, uh, with, uh, with your friends, uh, to, to, to your work. This is part of the psychological uh, methods that the Prophet ﷺ, he used to boost the trust and to boost the confidence, self-confidence in your kids. Giving pleasure and joy to the child through good reception to them, kissing them, wiping their, he their heads, carrying them, providing them with good food, eating with them, even calling them with the good names, not bad names. All that yani, underneath the psychological part. Constructive competition among the children, encouragement for the children, praising them, developing the child confidence through keeping secrets. Some, sometimes the Prophet Sallallahu he would give to the young child a secret to keep. This is to prove yani, the self-confidence. Fasting in early ages, developing the social confidence when the child yani, uh, sent them to shop, the needs for, for, for home. It's good when you take your, your kids to the shopping to let them do and practice the shopping while you are supervising them. This is to increase their social confidence. There are more than 27, I counted more than 27 psychological styles that the Prophet ﷺ used in this sector only. How many of us read or practice 
these methods in raising our children. What we are practicing right now with our children is more culture than Islam, away from Islam. Away from Islam. We need to explore and to read that and to practice it in our life. Practicing these, these methods will eliminate many of the mental and psychological issues that our kids are experiencing nowadays. أسأل الله عز وجل أن يحفظ بيوتنا وبيوتكم بالإيمان والتقوى وأن يفقهنا في ديننا وأن يجعلنا من يحيون سنة نبينا في جميع قلوب المسلمين على طاعته ونصرة دينه ومن من مرجعهم في كل أمورهم كتاب الله وسنة رسوله إنه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين استغفر الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ومن سار على ناجيهم واقتدى بالسنة مواديهم إلى يوم الدين ما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters As usual I will conclude the subject of my khutbah which was about uh, the methods of raising children in Islam with lessons learned, recommendations and even some of the projects يعني proposed projects related to the uh, khutbah in a way to transfer these type of abandoned meanings and sunnas and to move it from the theoretical dimension to the practical reality and I have four suggestions over here, or five. The first one, we need to make more lectures and workshops and courses for the parents on how to raise their children in Islam using the biography of Prophet Muhammad because it's rich. It's rich with a lot of methods and tools that the parents, they, they can utilize and it will help them a lot in raising their children over here. Also making a joint activity such as the mother-daughter day or father-son day that will enhance the parenting communication and it will increase the quality time and it's important to have a quality time with your kids when you enter your home please turn off your mobile and play with your kids sit with your kids prophet muhammad وسلم, who was the ultimate leader at that time and a prophet he used to يعني, crawl on his hand, on his, يعني, uh, crawl like, uh, يعني, uh, imitating like a camel. And Al Hassan and Hussein, they ride the back of Prophet Muhammad. And he used to say, that the best camel is your camel. So it's good to have that type of good quality time with your kids. Build, building a curriculum to guide the parents on how. يعني, uh, to help them systematically to set يعني, a valuable social, educating and entertaining weekly family meetings with their kids. Because one of the reasons why maybe the parents they don't sit with their kids because they don't have the material. And they need to do a lot of research to talk about the seerah or the Quran and these things. So having that type of curriculum, a simple cur curriculum, this will يعني, encourage the parents to sit periodically and every week with their kids to teach them and to have that type of quality time. Also presenting a, a, a parent consultation a hotline. We need to have a parent, yani parenting consultation hotline. That will help the parents to for the right type of consultation at the right time from the right experts. And we need to protect our kids from the bad influences on their values and their religion that they face يعني, whether that was from their friends, from their peers, and unfortunately nowadays they are facing it from bad teachers and bad schools and government policies. So this is why I urge my brothers and sisters, as they mentioned over here, and the masjid is urging them to join in uh, Wednesday, March 20th, uh, in, in a rally that uh, to uh, where we raise our voice against that and what they are trying to doctrinate uh, our kids at, at the school with a values that is away from our Islamic teaching and the freedom of religion and the freedom of belief. Also, there will be a Salat al-Ghaib on, uh, after the prayer, inshallah, on uh, the, the people who died in al-Maghrib and, and Libya, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them all and, and count them from the shuhada. Inna Allahu wa malaykatahu yusallun ala nabihi ya alihi wa ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabihina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima kathira. Allahumma jajal ishtima'ana hadha ishtima'a marhuma. Wajal tafarruqana min ba'dihi tafarruqan ma'asuma. Wala tajal fina wala min bayna shakir wala mahruma. 
اللهم هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولوالد والدينا ولمن له حق علينا واغفر لجميع المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب ومجيب الدعوات إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنع